Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're going to be talking about the idea and the concept of building yourself some blast doors. So we've got this door here, we don't actually know the relevant strength of it yet because it's characteristic it's haven't actually been put in, but all you can really do with it is fit yourself in, or a very, very small ship. So today we're going to be doing some basic sort of door designs. Obviously you can get really complicated with your door designs, really intricate, but I've decided to keep them nice and simple so for you guys who just want to get a simple door on your spaceship or even on your space station, this is what you can do. So this is the first door design I recommend. It's simple, effective and it doesn't take up much space. So here we have the actual mechanics behind the job. So what the plan is, is this one will rotate up here, that one will rotate up here, you activate this one first, this rotor spins, and it just works beautifully. I'll take you around the front and we can have a quick look at it. So there is a small gap, as you can see, but you could easily seal that up if you really wanted to. And we've got that, just that small, small gap in the middle, and it's just one layer of thickness. So it'll still protect your stuff and it'll stop people getting in. I'll, I'll have a go, I'll try to be a guy trying to get in. No, can't get in. Can't get in this hangar, definitely. Right. So what we need to do now is try this baby out. So on our rotor 2, we need to start that one first. We'll put that velocity up. And there we go. So that doorway is open. And as that one opens, all we need to do is open this baby as well. So we can open that one up as well. So basically, that is both doors opening up nice and functional. Make sure braking torque's on. There we go. So that is both doors opening up nice out the way. You've got that full area where you can get your ship in so we'll just close them up closing these babies up now and all we have to do to do that is basically repeat the process in reverse order so you want to set that to positive and that'll swing back down into position and then you set the other one to negative and there it goes and there's basically your door back together nice and sealed nice and simple and we've got no damage Right, moving on, let's talk about a piston operated door. So you may have seen quite a few of these, and I've seen quite a few as well. And the concept is basically a piston pulls the door away, and then it puts it back into position. This is a rather different concept that I've got going here. We've got this second piston here, well, what piston rotor, you could say. And the concept is that this will actually pull back through here, It'll push up against the ceiling, and I can use this rotor on the back here to flatten it if it decides to go a little bit crazy, you could say. Right, so we're just going to get in this thing. It's quite simple. All we've got to do is drag that piston back along here, and the door should open without any fuss. So there's the rotor that we need. All we need to do is power that on, then set it to a positive velocity. So there's the door. Oh shit, I may have set it too fast. Hold on. Speed is key. Slower doors do and make less damage. So that's what you want to think about. So we'll just slow it down a little bit. So the door basically is coming back from the hinges. And basically what will happen is it's going to get into a position here where we'll lock it in place. You can see how it's smoothing back. And if anything goes wrong at any time, all we have to do is lock the landing gears on this actual pad. And we'll be fine. So have we cleared the door yet? We've not cleared it quite yet. And as you can see, it's came off at a bit of an angle, and that's what that second hinge is there for, to give it a good pat back into position, you could say. Right, so we have a landing gear there. That is the one that went missing from before. And there we go. That's basically in place. That landing gear didn't break off. I cut a hole out just to demonstrate what a hole in the back would be before, and I kind of went missing that landing gear. So there it is. Right, so all we have to do now is seal this up by turning the off. Braking top will take over. And we everything should be okay. Now that's good. That's good. And now braking talk. Have you taken over, sir? Yes, you have. So the door's sealed, and basically you could enter with your ship, whatever you want to do. And then basically, and it's just basically repeating the operation to actually continue this thing. So all you'd have to do is get back in the machine, re-push that piston back into place, and lock it in place. So once it's locked in place, it's good to go for another round. And if you may notice as well that these blast doors are getting thicker and thicker through the designs we actually do. So this is the next one. This one is another really simple door, 
but works really effective. And this allows you have to have a really thick door as well. This could be 30, 40, even 50 blocks long. And imagine trying someone to breach into a space station with a, like a bricks that are like 15, 16 penetration. I mean, they'd be there all day, to be honest, unless they had a few charges. So this works pretty simple as well. We just get ourselves back in the cockpit and then we turn this bad boy on. So we're already set up to rock. And we're just going to say on a nice slow one because I don't like going too fast because it kind of either causes damage or it could even rock your ship. So there we go. Another simple door design to get inside your ship. And that is probably one of the fastest, most effective ones. This is the one I use on a lot of my ships because just look how simple that can fold away. I mean, it just folds away really nicely into the side of your ship and stays nice and square on. So you can have a nice design like that. Right. Now, this is where Aaron got so complicated, he even confused himself, so it might go wrong this, because I've kind of forgot how to function it. I'll give you a brief overview of it. So, we have up here a, a drawbridge-style pull-up system. Down here, we have chains connecting this along. The chains connect up to this double armor thickness door. Along the back, we have landing gears to keep it in its guidance. Now, here's a little bit of an important factor. Say that you've got a bricks like this and you've made it so it butts up tight against there. Now this is probably what you're wondering, how would you get it butting up tight against there without a problem? So this is all you have to do, so I'll just demo it. Basically what you do is you copy and paste your doorway, or you have your doorway already pre-constructed, like so. And then you get yourself a door. So I've just happened to have one pre-constructed here, one I built earlier. And what you have to do is you actually just have to get yourself into position and then press it up against and then copy it into place so you see that's pretty tight against it we're just going to drop that in place there so now that's dead tight across it now the problem that you'll run into is this is exactly what will happen I'll just delete this and show you so this is what will happen you'll start building up the back of your door like so and then you run into a dilemma because you try to do this I'll show you exactly you try to do this you get your landing gear out and you try to fit it against against the brick, and you're like, why is it why is it not fitting in place? Oh, it's just and then and then you've got to think of some solution. So this is this was my solution for that problem. Is all you do is you get a motor or rotor or whatever you want to call it, and you get yourself in position here like so, and then all you have to do is do this, and it's and that sort literally solves the pro solve the problem for me. So I'm just gonna get that a bit more in place, get that up and we need a nine so there you go so that's basically now able to lock that in position and if I was actually just gonna build it here you can see that it wouldn't actually reach because it would actually go through the design so I press a nine sir and you look see it's just it's just that too it's just too far away even if we put it on this so you see that now it can't it can't fit in but using that little bit of a motor gives us that little bit of an inch gap that we need so we can lock a landing gear on and then basically you just copy that across like so and then you've got the lock that you need add a few more of them babies on and then you're good to go so that was my solution to that problem when things wouldn't meet up correctly but I bet you're dying to see this function so the final thing that I didn't show you is inside here there is actually a rock that I use gravity to actually lower the gate after I pulled it up so let's go through the very complex stages of doing this thing and hopefully I don't get something wrong. So there's the door, nice and simple, heavy blast door this is. So the first thing we need to do is make sure this landing gear is not locked, but it is. So we unlock that, then we move over to this cockpit here, move to a T and then you can already see the door start to move out of position and landing gear is not in proximity. And all we want to do is bring this up nice and slowly, too fast, and it's going to destroy it completely. So, rotor one is the back door, rotor two is the one I believe we need. So, all we have to do is turn this on and set this very carefully on the RPM scale. So, I think that is about fast enough. No, that's going to be too fast, too fast. Um, slow that down a little bit, probably put it on about just under one, maybe. Probably a good, a good point to put it on and minimize back down right so the chain is now picking up what well, I believe the chain is picking up the wrong way damn it Aaron this is this is why you need to try to remember this is the problem with complex doors 
is that you have to remember a hell of a lot more. It's like it's like you have to read a bigger instruction manual. And who can be bothered doing that? No, I'm just joking. Uh, right, there we go. So we've done a rotate the other way around, and the door should start coming up correctly and at the right amount of speed. So you can see the actual turntable sort of style old-fashioned drawbridge idea. I mean, the thing with a drawbridge is that it comes up an angle, but I guess this is a drawbridge as well, because you used to see these in castles as well, when they'd be like, drop the gate. Yeah, so don't worry too much. And there it is, nice and sl slides up nice and fast, and then proximity of landing gears, and P, and then a K quickly, K? I need the K, what's going on? Okay, and now we need to lock the things in place by turning off the rotor, because otherwise we'll snap it. Right, there we go. And finally, set that rotor there for the braking torque lock, like that. So then it'll stop moving it completely. So I had a little bit of lag, and that's obviously caused issues. And I just um, you'll just have to imagine that there's actually a hole there. You don't need, you don't actually need any of these. You can pretty much delete them all, and then just make yourself a hole. You can make a hole there. And it'll lower down fine. It's just because when I was building this thing, it's easier to build it in one big chunk than it is. But you've got a nice door you can fly in. And now that that is pretty complicated, isn't it? It's completely over the top. And that is pretty much it. So I'd love to hear your feedback. And hopefully I gave you some ideas to build some different doors on your ships and stations. But thanks, and I'll see you next time.